Today, I'm going to show you every single setting that you need to know as a controller player in Fortnite Season 2. And a lot of people think the only important settings are your sensitivity and your controller binds, but that is further from the truth. I'm going to show you the tips and secrets about the Fortnite settings menu that every controller player needs to know. So make sure to watch the full settings guide so you don't miss anything. And the controller sensitivity and controller binds for every controller play style will be at the end of the video. Alrighty, guys, so we're jumping directly into our settings. And on the first tab, you console players are going to have a couple settings here and the only two settings you need to change is your fps mode to 120 fps and you need to turn off your motion blur now i'm on pc performance mode so you're not going to see that here but for the rest of my pc guys make sure you're playing on 1920 by 1080 unless you use a custom resolution also i see a lot of people playing on windowed full screen for whatever reason and this gives you an automatic 30 milliseconds of input delay so make sure you're playing full screen not windowed full screen then your frame rate limiter make sure you change this to your monitor monitors refresh rate so if you have 144 hertz keep your fps at 144 and for me i have a 240 hertz so i keep mine at 240 then rendering mode as always definitely stay on performance mode in pc guys i'm only going to show you the tricks to get lower input delay and higher fps on the fortnite settings but if you want to know how to optimize your windows to help your pc run faster make sure to watch the video on the top right of your screen after this video then next this also includes you console players this is just personal preference your brightness and colorblind settings me personally i think any colorblind mode is super ugly so i keep all of it off then next for the pc guys make sure 3d resolution is at 100 don't turn this down at all even if you are on a low-end pc you're not going to be able to see opponents very well from long range and it's better to just take the fps hit of having 100 3d res but you need to be on a really bad pc to be messing with your 3d resolution in the first place so keep that at 100 then view distance on low textures on low meshes always keep on low then show fps is personal preference and report performance stats keep this off now moving on to the audio tab most of your audio Audio tab is personal preference and it depends on what system you're on but for the, but for me these are the perfect sound settings for me but keep in mind i do use an audio amplifier for my headphones so i keep my main volume pretty low because my headphones are high impedance and they get super loud so don't base your audio settings off mine make sure you mess with yours personally the only thing i'd say is come to your sound quality and turn this on low this will give you a bit of a performance boost especially if you're on console then go down to the subtitles right here and we're gonna go into here and turn all of this off or all the way to the left this will also help you a bit with performance then visualize sound effects make sure you have this on this gives you a crazy advantage especially whenever you're playing ranked and the only players i recommend to keep this off is the players that are on a super low end pc an xbox one a ps4 or the nintendo switch because this will tank your fps about 10 to 15 on pc give or take so i know for sure it's gonna hurt you old gen console players then the rest of the audio settings this is all personal preference now moving on to your game settings and first up we're gonna go to the matchmaking region and make sure you don't have this on auto you want to make sure this stays on na east and the reason being is because sometimes fortnite will automatically throw you on to the wrong server for example you can see here na central has a 37 millisecond delay and na east is 33 but if i stay on auto sometimes i will end up on central servers and i don't want that happening especially when i'm playing ranked i can tell this because sometimes i have 40 to 50 ping when i'm on auto and sometimes i have 30. now moving down to language and if you put your language on Japanese, you get lower and put the... No, I'm just kidding. Moving down to toggle sprint, guys. Make sure you keep this on. Auto open doors is personal preference, but if you mess up edits a lot and you accidentally edit doors into your builds, turn this on. It can help you keep your momentum while building. Mantle activation, definitely keep this on hold jump. The reason why you don't want this on hold forward is because if you jump and you press forward, you'll automatically mantle just like this. And that can easily make you accidentally fall off your builds, which is super annoying. So make sure you have it on hold jump jump to where you get the option to double press your jump bind to activate your mantle. I can't tell you how many times hold forward got me eliminated. It was super frustrating. In the hurdle activation, you want to keep this on press jump as well for the same reason. And next is hold to swap pickup. The reason you want this off is because whenever you have this on and you go to pick up a weapon just like this, there's a tiny little delay in between having this setting off and having it on. So if you're rushing against an opponent to pick up a weapon from floor loot, or if you're flying in and landing on a weapon, whoever has this setting off will pick up the weapon first now toggle targeting make sure you have this off that is a little bit personal preference but i keep this off and i recommend you do too mark deja targeting this is total personal preference auto pickup weapons you definitely
definitely want to keep this off because you don't want your inventory being cluttered full of a bunch of gray weapons when you don't need them. Now, preferred item slots. This is a big one, and I recommend you copy everything I have here. And if you don't want to copy mine to a T, I absolutely recommend that you keep your loadout slot one at least on your shotgun. This one is the most important. And let me show you why. Let's say there's an opponent in this box right here, and I'm going to try to take their wall and I pull out my build mode. Then I put my build mode away. I'm automatically at my pickaxe. And now that my pickaxe is out, all I have to do is press once on my right bumper and I'm instantly at my shotgun. And for example, if my inventory was set up this way here where my AR was first, then I try to go take a wall and then I put my builds away and I go for my shotgun. I have to hit this twice and you're automatically losing extra time by having to go through twice and not getting a shot off on your opponent. So it's way easier just to be able to do this and boom, instant get your shotgun out. And the next setting is auto sort consumables to the right. This gets negated by your preferred item slot. So you can keep this on or off. Doesn't matter. Then reset building choice. Make sure you have this on. And the reason why is because if I'm fighting an opponent and he's in this box right here and I'm trying to go for his wall, all I have to do is get his wall weak, get behind cover, jump from a peanut butter and grab the wall just like that. Then that allows me to edit this and get a nice shot off on my opponent. And for example, if I place a cone in this box, put my builds away, then go and try to edit the wall back there. My cone is still selected. So I have to press my wall bind first. Then I can grab this edit. That's all the way back here. So you always want to make sure your wall is your first building choice, not a cone, a stair or a ramp. But guys, I also have a crazy secret tip to make you play insane at Fortnite. And nobody ever talks about this. And I don't know why it is super underrated and way overlooked. And if you use this to your advantage, you'll be absolutely OP. And I'm talking about not being a nerd net gamer and gaming for 24 hours straight and actually getting some decent sleep. And yes, I'm being dead serious. And the best possible way to do that is to use Manta Sleep Masks, which is the sponsor of today's video. Manta Sleep makes the absolute best sleep masks on planet Earth. And the reason why I thought they'd be a good partner in general is because taking naps can seriously benefit you in all walks of life. And that's kind of what Manta Sleep is out here to do. But Manta Sleep literally makes that 10 times better. Now on Manta Sleep's website, they have tons of different options to choose from. And they're all really good. But my favorite in particular is what I have here, the Manta Sleep Mask Sound. This is a sleep mask with Bluetooth speakers. I'm being dead serious. This thing has speakers in it. Look, it's crazy because the sound quality on these are actually good. Look how thin they are. They're like razor thin. Even if, even if you, even if you, I don't know what genius came up with this, but you don't even notice it even if you sleep on your side. And the versatility on these masks are absolutely incredible. These masks will fit any shape or size that you got. And also you can adjust these non-pressure eye cups, which are so freaking comfortable. So if you feel like you need to have them a little bit closer, you can just rip it up and stick it on. It's Velcro, but I'm not going to change mine again because mine's dialed in. It's absolutely perfect and I don't want to mess it up. And also the Velcro they use on these masks is super small. To be honest, I don't know how somebody came up with this technology, but the Velcro is literally soft, but not just one side of the Velcro is soft. Like both are soft and smooth. It's really weird and it doesn't annoy you or get your hair stuck or anything like that. So guys, get more cracked at Fortnite and start taking naps by using Mantis Sleep Sleep Masks. I'm actually being serious. Now that I have this thing, I'm actually taking naps and I've never been able to do that in my whole life, but now I just toss on ocean sounds for the Bluetooth speakers and bro, I'm out in like five minutes. And also guys, Mantis Sleep was kind enough to give you 10% off your order by using code takeoff when you're at checkout. And if you're not taking sleeping serious and you're not gonna be good at Fortnite. So seriously, go check out Mantis Sleep. And again, a huge thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. But now guys, let's go ahead and continue on with the video. Then disable pre-edit option, make sure you have this off. This gives you a terrible edit delay, especially if you're on controller. So if you're messing up your double edits or triple edits, this setting is probably why. Most of you guys already know what this setting does, but make sure you have it off even if it is somewhat useful. Turbo building, obviously you definitely wanna have on and then auto confirm edits. I recommend that you set this to both. This will automatically confirm your edits. So if I press A or the paddle on the back of my controller, then press my select edit and let go, it automatically edits it. And same thing goes for resetting builds. But the reason why I only keep mine on edit is because I have a controller scroll wheel. So I don't need auto confirm resets. I only need auto confirm edit because I have this controller squirrel wheel that does all this good stuff for me. The contextual tips, you can turn this on or off. Doesn't matter. They're not very helpful. Then the rest of this is personal preference, except NVIDIA highlights and tab.
app to search in Iraq. So NVIDIA highlights pretty much clip stuff automatically for you if you're on PC, as long as you have an NVIDIA graphics card and you don't want extra softwares recording in the background trying to get clips for you because that'll hurt your FPS a little bit. Then tap to search slash interact. You definitely want to have this on. It's way easier to search chests and ammo crates and stuff like that. Now for the FOV minimum and FOV maximum, you want to keep these as high as possible. And these are pretty much only for when you're sprinting in game. So whenever you're sprinting and hurdling things, for example, like this, it changes your FOV a little bit and you just want to have the highest possible FOV that you can get. Now down to the replays. And unless you actually use your replays, make sure you turn these off. And I recommend anybody turn these off in general. Turning your replays off is probably the easiest way to get a huge FPS boost in Fortnite, no matter what console or PC you play on. All of these record replays destroys your FPS and it gives you a ton of input lag. So make sure you have all of these off. And energy saving mode, especially if you're on a gaming laptop, make sure to turn these off. You don't want Fortnite not consuming the power it needs to be able to give you the best FPS possible. And that's what this setting will do. And it'll destroy your FPS as well. Now, moving on to the HUD options. If you like what my damage numbers look like, then go ahead and copy all of these settings. I think these are the easiest settings and the most clear damage feedback numbers that you could possibly have. Then for the HUD scale, I keep mine at 75, but it's personal preference. And this is what all I keep on or off. Now, moving on to the gyro options, the most useless tab of all of Fortnite settings. Nobody that's decently good at the game uses gyro settings. I haven't seen one player that's actually good with these settings play the game. And it's only for you PS4, PS5 players anyways. But in general, make sure you turn all of these off, especially if you do use a PlayStation controller. And the reason being is because you don't want your system constantly searching in the background for a compatible gyro controller. So I recommend you come in here and turn all of this off. Then for the mouse and keyboard settings, these are really good sensitivities if you want to give keyboard and mouse a try, but controller gang on top, I don't ever use mouse and keys. Keyboard and mouse in general is super boring and it even feels like I'm cheating whenever I'm playing it. I don't know. Controller is way better. So if you play keyboard and mouse, just pick up a controller, dude. But the keyboard and mouse controls is something that actually is important to my controller specifically. Like I mentioned earlier, I use a scroll wheel attachment on my controller. And this scroll wheel attachment also has a middle mouse button bind. And it's pretty much just like an extra paddle on my controller, except up here. And I use this as my sprint, which is super helpful as a controller player. And then obviously I use scroll wheel down for scroll wheel reset. And I use scroll wheel up for my slot one, which is my shotgun bind. If you guys are interested in picking up a controller scroll wheel, links in the description. This is the best way to get better mechanics on controller. And I'm being serious. And I'll quickly show you how to set these settings up correctly to be able to use this. So come to the sprint option in the keyboard controls. You're going to want to make the middle mouse button your sprint. Then you're going to want to come down to your building edit and you're going to want to put this as scroll down. And then also on your reset building edit, you want to put this as scroll down. Then if you want to be able to scroll wheel up to get your shotgun out, come to weapon slot one and set that as your scroll wheel up. Pretty simple. And now whenever I just flick up, boom, I'm at my shotgun. It's super, super useful because I can instantly get to it even if I have my builds out. And then obviously I'm sprinting around with this bind here. Then of course, every controller player's dream, the instant reset right there for scroll wheel down. And now we're going to move on to the controller sensitivity options. And first up is controller auto run. Obviously you're going to want that on and then build immediately builder pro absolute. Yes, you need this on as well. Then your edit hold time. We're going to talk about this later on in the video, because if you're still pressing and holding B to edit your builds, you're just putting yourself at a huge disadvantage. So don't worry about this. I just turned mine all the way off. If you're slide hold time, I recommend 0.070 seconds. This is the perfect in between of running and wanting to just quickly crouch and running and sliding whatever I want to. Then reset camera access. This is a gyro setting. I don't know why it's not over here in the gyro options. It's right in here for whatever reason. So just uh, leave that alone. Same thing with reset camera time. Then vibration. Definitely keep this off. I see a lot of controller players playing with vibration and it messes up your aim, especially from long range. Like if you're trying to be super precise and you're on linear with a low dead zone, it'll mess up your aim a little bit. And if you're used to it, kind of a psychopath anyway. So uh, yeah, make sure you turn your vibration off for controller for sure. Now moving on to quick weapon beta. And I'm going to turn this on just to show you guys why you actually shouldn't use this. Quick weapon beta is Epic Games' solution to try to fix the stupid inventory system that they have for controller players having to swap in between. But this thing absolutely sucks. And I'll tell you why. For example, there's a huge input delay from trying to just go to my shotgun compared to the original way that you sort through your inventory with your bumpers. So if I have my shotgun out and I want to shoot, then quickly swap to my SMG. That little bit of input delay going from my shotgun to my SMG could be the difference in between 
between me getting the elimination or me getting eliminated. Now, this system definitely is better, but if it didn't have that stupid delay, I would definitely say go for it. But no controller players use this. And even still, if you have your inventory set up just like mine, like I showed you earlier with the preferred item slots, you can still get to all of your weapons really quickly. Now, I do want to know it does say show diamond delay. The example I just showed you was with this delay at zero, and it still has a mega delay there. So it's pretty frustrating. So definitely keep this on custom only. And now moving on to the sensitivity options. Okay. So first up, our, our look in ADS sensitivity on our non advanced options. So we're going to come here and turn that off. And I highly recommend you guys take these settings from four all the way down to one. Then once you put both of these settings at one, come back to use advanced options and turn this on. Then come down here and adjust your horizontal and your vertical speeds with both of these at one. And the reason why we do this is to get way better crosshair placement for linear players on controller. Putting your non-advanced options down to one literally makes it feel like you have a slow dead zone with zero ramp up, just a straight linear curve on your joystick. And all those fancy words pretty much means that it makes it way easier to aim, especially from long range. But guys, don't just trust me. Take the advanced options and turn it off. Put these both at 10, then turn your advanced options back on and try to go hit quad edits. It's really hard. Your crosshair placement's a lot faster. So I recommend keeping those at one. Now for your build and edit mode sensitivity, I recommend keeping this anywhere from 2.0, 2.0 to 2.2, 2.2. That's the absolute sweet spot for controller players, especially if you're on linear. And most pro controllers use settings anywhere from 1.8 to 2.0. So in between is the absolute sweet spot. And that goes for the same thing on your horizontal and vertical speeds. Okay. So these, I recommend keeping anywhere from 40 to 45%. Now everyone is a little bit different and people play with different controllers. So maybe adjust them up and down just a little, depending on how they feel for you. But I've kept my look speeds and my build and edit mode sensitivity the same for years now. And I have tested all of the controller settings out there. And especially for this season, you're going to want a slower, more precise sensitivity to be able to hit shots with the new weapons, but especially snipers, because as everybody knows, snipers are crazy OP this season. Now coming out to boosts, make sure you turn these off. These will really, really hurt you when it comes to trying to learn muscle memory with your linear aim and especially your instant boost while building. You don't want your sensitivity to be boosting up and down between you using your weapons or having your pickaxe out compared to you building. Now, guys, if you want to hit absolute beams on controller, use 11, 11 on look vertical and look horizontal on on your ADS speeds. This is the best linear ADS speed by far. And tons of controller players also agree with me. Tons of my viewers will use this ADS sensitivity and they send me their clips on Twitter thanking me for these settings. But guys, it's not just the 11% on both. That's the secret. It's the turning boost ramp time that gets you long range accuracy. Having boost ramp time for your ADS sensitivity only will really help with your long range tracking. And it'll also slow down your linear curve to be able to hit super precise shots from long range. And guys, like I said, snipers are super important this season. And even the snipers without scopes using 0.20 seconds on your boost ramp time will help you hit those snipes and will really help your tracking. Go into the description, go to my Twitter and tell me in my DMs if you guys actually like these settings. I respond to everybody there. So make sure to drop me a follow and let me know what you think of these. Now coming down to the look dampening time, make sure you have this off unless you play exponential. But I don't recommend anybody play exponential unless you've been playing on it for years. And when I say years, I mean the whole entire life of Fortnite. If you never switch to linear, you're still on Expo. Go ahead and stay on Expo. But linear is superior, man. It's that simple, especially when it comes to building and editing and the rest of your mechanics on controller. Now, aim assist strength, obviously keep this at 100%. Now your dead zones. I recommend you keep your left stick dead zone at about 15%. And the reason why is because you don't want to have a super sensitive left stick dead zone and accidentally walk off your builds when you're super high up in game. Yes, I'm talking about personal experience there. Okay. But on your right stick, I recommend you keep this anywhere from 5% to 8%. Depending on the drift of your controller, how bad it is, you can go ahead and turn it up and down. But even if your drift is really, really bad, like my controller, as you can see here, I still recommend you keep it lower than 8% because you're going to have your thumb on your right joystick as much as possible anyways, especially while you're aiming. So that drift won't necessarily matter. Then for enable foot controller, keep this off. It's the same reason we have the gyro settings off. You don't want your system searching in the background, looking for for a foot controller that's compatible with the game. It's going to cause a little bit of input delay, okay? So keep that off and also keep these all the way to the left. The vehicles accelerate with stick. This is just personal preference. I have mine on. And now for the controller binds. Now, something that's really important, guys. I have four paddles on the back of my controller, as you can see here. I'm going to quickly skim through my controller binds 
so you can copy mine if you also use four paddles on controller. Now, if you only use two paddles on controller, I recommend you have your top right paddle, your edit, and your top left paddle, your build mode. Then your down left stick as your jump. Then the rest of your controller binds are personal preference. Now, if you don't use any paddles at all, I recommend you keep your down left stick as your build mode and your down right stick as jump and your edit as Y. Yes, guys, you're gonna have to claw Y. Learning how to claw Y for edit is the absolute easiest editing bind on any controller if you don't have paddles. Now, if you don't wanna learn claw, you can take your finger off your right joystick to go and press A as your edit, but I highly recommend that you claw your Y for your edit. You will never unlock your full potential as a controller player if you're taking your finger off your joystick to jump build or edit. You need to at least have those three bound to your controller where you don't have to take your right thumb off this stick to be able to use any of those. And guys, the rest of all of this is personal preference. And really quick again, if you have four paddles, this is what I use. Top right paddle edit, top left paddle build mode, bottom right reload slash interact, and bottom left is my pickaxe. And also, I always get comments about this or DMs on Twitter about me using the Xbox Elite Series 2 app, the Xbox Xbox accessories app to change the analog settings on my controller. Well, no, I keep everything default on this controller. And yes, even the stick tension is on default. I don't use any stick tension, but I do recommend that you use a tall stick with a control freak and get this right stick as tall as you possibly can. If you have an elite series two controller or a different pro controller that has a tall stick option. Now guys, this is super important. Go into the comments and comment the word purple. I want to see who the real ones are and who watches my full videos. And I'm going to subscribe back to some of you guys for showing me a lot of support. Also, if you have any questions, I'm going to be checking the comments, obviously. So leave it down below. And if I don't get to your comment or respond to you within a couple of days, go into the description, go to my Twitter and DM me on Twitter. I respond to every single DM I get on Twitter if it's a question revolving around my videos. And also, guys, if you want to learn how to edit faster on controller, Click the video on screen. I had thousands of you tell me that there was some really good information in here. You guys love this video. So if you haven't seen it, I'm guessing you will too. And again, thanks for watching to the very end. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.